Gentlemen. So for a while I've really been looking forward to this video because of a very little amount of help on this topic. So now that the time has come at last, I will be your guide today. In this video we're going to be going through a couple of basics and possibly better explanation than most. Keep in mind that I am not a professional at this, but I have done it a lot. Well then, take a seat, relax, and hold on to your socks, and let us begin. Now, what a hinge glitch is, is basically just a hinge glitching a block into another and can be very handy for multiple things like glitching in cockpits or just getting a nicer and more smoother look. And this right here is a prime example of a hinge glitch. It's just simply another block glitching into another. No biggie. It's, quite, it's actually quite simple if I had to put so myself. Examples where this can be used can either be a, well, like I said, aesthetic, but can also be used advantage-wise. So like, for instance, if you just want a couple of things to work, extra control surfaces, you can make it work like that. And definitely better for wing design and such. As you can see, it's on a wing right here, and it glitches right in over here. If we take a look at it from the build menu perspective, you can see it yourself right here. So where you would struggle to get control surfaces to the side like this, you can always use hinges or even better use it for your cockpit just to make it a bit more sleek if you know what I mean. Now another glitch that you can use for aesthetic purposes is of course the piston glitch. Now the piston glitch does the same thing as the hinge glitch. It just glitches the blocks in but more of a vertical way if you know what I mean. Best way to do this is literally just to attach separate blocks onto a piston and then just, you know let it come in. Of course, is to set the starting position to zero, so they can just come in on a dime as soon as you spawn in and set the speed at max, and there you go. Now you've got your little cockpit glitched in. A prime example that this can be used are builds like these. Even I myself use piston glitching quite often, more for cockpits than anything. Like, if you do not have enough space for a seat, you can always squeeze in a seat as so. You can always just hop in and then your character's right there. It's much better used for 1x3 frames, especially for more compact cockpits, so to speak. I use this cockpit design quite often on quite a few of my jets. I don't know, I just like it, man. Now, for the next bit, we're actually going to move on to full-on functionality. So, I'm going to be going through the wings and how to build it and what I know of. Usually, I'll just, you know, tell everyone, trial and error. You must know your ways, learn from your mistakes, blah, 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 yabba, yabba, yabba. But I do know a couple of things that could help you. <coughs> um, excuse me. Anyways. So now, when we build a jet, we need to keep in mind of six things. We obviously have our, you know, stabilizers, we have our control surfaces, and we have guns, thrust, wings, and once again, control surfaces. Now I've painted these differently because we use these in different ways. Thrust placement, and when I say thrust placement, I mean it. It actually matters, ladies and gentlemen. So, thrust placement and control surfaces, of course. They are very handy for building a jet, you know, very handy, very important. It of course matters on placement, which I will show you in a second. But I just wanna, you know, I just wanna let this out. Whoever uses the blue, the wing pieces in their damn elevators, you're weird, man. <laughs> now, if you've ever built a jet and it tries to nosedive or instantly goes into orbit, or your roll is just kind of extremely slow, then my friend, your control surfaces are the culprit. Now, what control surfaces technically are, are either your elevators, your wing tips, which is your roll, or your yaw. Oh, oh. And not only are they just there to get your jet to move around, roll, do whatever the hell you want, they are really important to keep you up. Hence why some of you struggle with Delta Wings if you ever tried to, well, try to build a Eurofighter, of course. I don't even know what this is. What is this? Sometimes when you've built a jet and it just rolls up or pitches down for no reason, control surfaces are always the best. Or should I say, very much preferably, do not use wings as your elevators. Now, it can be rewarding in some times if you do everything else right, but keep in mind, I also got elevators right there, and I was just keeping this stable. They oftenly reduce your pitch by so much, and especially compared to when you have elevators instead of wings. 
Just trust me, man. Don't use wings. And it's not just the fact that it's preferable for much higher pitch. It's just that it's also heavily unstable. So if you try to roll, you stall heavily. Or most case scenarios, it also just kind of impacts your flight. So the pitching up and down might, mo well, most definitely will be the wings in the back. Having wings in your elevators is not preferable whatsoever. So please, guys, stop being goobers and use elevators instead. But besides the normal elevator nonsense, even if you have elevators, sometimes your wing design just doesn't fit the high amount of pitch that you want or very responsive pitch that you desperately so need. So another way to do it is obviously by placing elevators in the front. But instead of having them on their normal, which is S up, W down, if you do it the other way around, you're really weird. Instead, we reverse it. So it becomes like an arch like this. It will kind of just move like the back ones push it down and then the front elevators push it up, creating a perfect roll. Then you, when you turn down, it's the same thing, but in reverse. So if you really want fast jets, that is definitely a way to go through it. Or oh, I mean, sorry, 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 not fast jets, hyper maneuverable jets. Now, the reason why I feel so mixed about choosing between small elevators and wing flaps. Now, I prefer small elevators purely because of the fact that they're more maneuverable. Like, hang on, let me just show you. Because small elevators are for one small and they're just better, more faster when it comes to turning and how wide they can go. I believe they can go full 90 degrees, but I think the normal flaps can also do that. But small elevators are just more sensitive, more responsive compared to its apparent predecessor. It, it's Even though the, these flaps are at max speed, they take much longer to come back from the roll. Now, the other thing is they also provide lift so if you're really low in lift and kind of desperate but you do have a slot but you need control surfaces these are probably the best option for you i mean they work they still work but i have to put these on max speed in order to be even like th this is max right now this is like and i don't know it it's just not fast enough for me especially when you're coming out of stall rolls like this when you're diving down and you're coming out and you have to come out of that quickly it's slow it's really slow and you get stuck in that one position if you want to swap over it is not preferable in dark fights in my opinion i mean it depends on you of course if you combine them with elevators that can definitely work ah by far my most favorite topic out of all these jet parts wing placement now, by far, the most important part of building your aircraft are wings. Wing placement is absolutely necessary to its fullest extent. And if you ever want to figure out how you can place them and why, you know, this, this, that, let me, let me explain it to you. Now, when you build jets, there's, a, there's one thing you, you should keep in mind, especially specifically for the wing placement. I call it the wing line. Now, what the wing line is, is basically where your wings are placed on the side of the jet. And how this comes into importance is how your thrust is placed as well. It judges how much wings you genuinely need or how much less you need. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of lift coming to this jet. I mean, three large wing pieces, especially for the size of this jet, is a lot. And because, and that's all because of the fact that the thrusters are above the wings. Now, thrusters above the wings are, it, it's either aesthetic choice, like you can see, or it's purely because you didn't have enough space below. Now, the th problem is, especially with some of you that have built your jets and are genuinely trying to figure out because you've done all the steps right, but your jet is still pitching down. Check your thrust placement. Because if all else fails, put more wing. So basically what I'm trying to say here with about the wing line is when your thrusters are above the wings, it is more likely that if there's not enough lift, the jet will start pitching down. Or if the thrusters were one below this jet right now, it would pitch up horribly. It would, well, I mean, it of course depends on how much thrust is pushing it up compared to how much weight is at the front. Also, just another thing, don't use weight blocks. I genuinely despise you if you use weight blocks on your jet. That that destroys the entire purpose. Like, 
it's such a cheap move in my opinion. It's I feel the same about gyros. It's the same cheap move. I mean, don't get me wrong, you can use gyros on any goofy build you want, I do not care. But if it's for competitive-wise, well, not really much competitiveness in this game, unless own ego. But dogfight-wise, if you genuinely abuse gyros, there's the door. Now, if there's one thing in this game that is genuinely, well, like, or well, half and half, or kind of, for those new players out there or those who are just weird, your is underrated to them. Now, your is actually pretty good. It's, 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 it's pretty good, man. It's an underrated tactic. What I mean by that is your can come in so handy if you're busy in a dogfight and you're just stalling. You can just get right back into control or just straight up outspin the man. Don't have enough pitch? Pull this little sexy move that I pull every single time with jets with not enough pitch. Literally just roll to your side, you're down, and then pitch up, and then there you go. You are right under them, and your nose is pointed right at them. Now, a preferable block to use for your are elevators, obviously. And elevators, obviously, are just better for everyone, especially your control-wise. Even if it's not the greatest, it is still so handy when it comes to blocking... Pro well, no, not blocking, sorry. Dodging projectiles because how auto aim works is it fires ahead of you. Do you have any idea how handy it is to just turn your nose and go whoop? Sorry, you missed. Yeah, that's not much, but trust me, in a dogfight it actually carries. Especially with this one. <laughs> this jet's my baby. Last piece of advice I could give for any future dog jet builder, plane builder out there is wait. Now, you see, like I will go back to wait blocks. That's a cheap move, man. Just, just get out of my damn room. And uh, how I work with weight is I work with the back, middle, and front. Now, many things can make your jet go up and down like I've explained previously. Either control services, too much wing, or just weird thrust placement. But another thing, and it's an obvious choice, weight. Now, weight can come in, especially when your jet starts pitching up way too much, or starts pitching down way too much. And how I usually balance that out is I reduce weight at the back and I add weight to the front with guns. I do not go on until I have guns and then I see, okay, yikes, this is a problem. There's either the, too much weight at the back or there's thrust or I need more, con more elevators. It, it, it's pretty much as simple as that. Just add the guns, reduce weight at the back, use... Best way to do that, especially when it comes to covering up the bottom side, just use simple hoods. Like these, these hoods that you can get for a couple of coins if you go to the cosmetics. Trust me, they're good. They're not as strong as shields, but they cover it up and they are like a quarter, a quarter of the weight. So yeah, that's pretty much it from a little bit of advice. I might do a full on tutorial on jets at some point, but I just wanted to get this out there to help a lot of you out, especially with jet building. Just like some knowledge, you know, some extra knowledge on your side. I may have missed a couple of things, but, I mean, you guys will figure it out. The main point of the game is to learn trial and error, you know, build great things. And that's kind of what I'm trying to strive for. Well, well, help you guys strive for since I'm so guy. That, that, that was a bit cringe. But otherwise, I hope you guys had a wonderful time watching this video. I think, I don't know, you can let me know in the comments if you think it was alright, I don't know, it really all depends on you. And I, just for those who are still watching, I do want to apologize for taking so long on my video. Ugh, it's, it's, it's been a long one, it's been pain, it's been life, you know, it's the basics. But we got there at the end, and I'll be releasing another video soon, at some point, maybe next week or this week. Possibly, if I can think of another one. <laughs> but yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Enjoy!